hello, and welcome back to A Table for One. So this week, you can see I'm not down at the church, and that's actually because I did record at the church, but I had an audio issue, and suddenly it sounded like there was a large fly buzzing around the mic, and I was annoyed myself, and I really didn't want to make, make you guys listen to that. So, quickly re-recording, but you know, I find sometimes little things like this is helpful to me in the sense that I am the type of person, I, I'm a perfectionist, I like the things I do to be really good. And uh, and it's, it's good for me at times to have the little hiccups because it reminds me to hold it loosely and to adapt. And it's a lesson I think that's constantly I need to be reminded of, especially in a season like this where I feel like we're constantly adapting. But adaption's not bad. And adjusting our expectations isn't bad. And so we are recording. We're doing it. Um, and, you know, it's fun this week because we have hit the six-month mark since we started a table for one. And it's crazy to think. We've been doing this for six months. I just want to thank everybody that has been with us through this journey from day one or if you jumped in midway. It has, it has been a pleasure and an honor to get to do this for everybody. And it's been wonderful to get to sit down with people uh, every week or so to record a conversation to share with you so uh, it's been uh, it's been a challenge at times it has been a lot of work and sometimes not very much work it really varies but it definitely has been a learning experience and I, I want to thank you for for joining me on this journey this week before we jump into what I have for you I do want to call out a few things first of all Sunday night this Sunday night and then the next Sunday night basically bracketing or you know on either end book ending i guess uh, uh thanksgiving week we are not going to have the the communion night because we're going to have the communion night on wednesday night this next week it's kind of our traditional communion and pie night so come on down to the church uh on wednesday before thanksgiving we're going to do communion individually, kind of like we have been on Sunday nights. And there's going to be individual little hand pies for people to take. And it'd just be kind of a great time to, to reflect a little, to have communion, and to say hi to people before the holiday. Uh, other kind of big announcements right now is this next week, during, during Thanksgiving week, our normal stuff that we've been doing midweek isn't going to happen. So uh, a table for one, we're not going to do a video. A uh, youth group on Wednesday night is not going to happen. And a uh, digital home group is not going to happen. But those are all taking place again the next week. So don't miss out on those. Uh, you know the times. 6.30 for youth, 7 o'clock for the home groups online, and six, uh, both on Wednesday. And 6.30 is when uh, our next Table for One video is going to drop on, on Thursday. Now, that next that next Thursday, when we do our next table video, I'm really excited because like we've been doing each, uh, each uh, holiday season, we're gonna do an Advent series. So in the vein and, and the ideas that we've been doing of kind of this experiential, you know, multiple things that you rotate through, we're doing that but through this digital medium. I've been just racking my brain and working on it. We're pulling in other people. It's going to be a really fun time. Uh, some interesting, different things we're going to do to try to just reflect on this time and look and build the anticipation and look forward to our celebration of our Savior's birth. So that's going to start that first week after Thanksgiving. And uh, so join us each week as a new video goes live. There's going to be activities to do with kids. There's going to be stories. There's going to be songs. There's going to be all sorts of things. So join us in that. Some incidental things that are, that are, or at least one that's going to be happening is in December, there's going to be an, a parent movie night and the youth and children's departments are coming together to sponsor a, a viewing of the movie, The Social Dilemma. It's a documentary and it really is bringing out the concerns or dangers of social media and how that impacts young people. So there are limited seats. Uh, for that because of having to do distancing and stuff, but it's going to be the movie and a discussion time. So you can go to the website under events and see that and sign up for it, or you can contact the office and talk to Tony as he is sponsoring that. 
Also, we have coming up, we have blood donation through uh, Bloodworks Northwest. You can go through our website and click a link there to be able to sign up for slots. They are always needing blood, um, especially after all this COVID situation that we've been going through. Blood donations are down, so they could really use that help, and it's a way for us to help our community. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have? Uh, Thanksgiving boxes. Uh, those obviously are going to be going uh out this next week we can still use some more donations of funds for that but i want to say everybody great job for donating already a lot of funds have come in and that is wonderful to know how giving our community our faith community is so those are still going to be handed out we also need still could use some help with the handing out so contact the office for that and you'll be reaching out uh, so they they will help connect you in the way you need you can donate through our online portal uh, Star Tree. Star Tree is still going on. So if there are names of, of children that are families that you know that they are struggling this season and they're going to struggle providing a gift for their children, that this is a way that we help support those families and those people. So provide that name to the church. Uh, you can actually talk to Tony. Tony's going to be managing that. It's Tony at SpringfieldFaithCenter.org, uh, or you can call the office and uh, give them that name, give him that name. And then also, if you're wanting to sponsor that child or a child, contact the office and they can provide those names. And it's just a way that we do it every year. And it's a way that we can just show compassion and love to different people in our church in this season. Um... I think that is mostly everything. I don't think I've missed anything. If I have, I'm sorry. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we have a different episode for you this week that I am excited for. As I was reflecting on this whole, we've been doing it for six months, I started going back and looking at the videos from the beginning. To be honest, it was a little hard. They were a little rough. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I learned a lot um, and they were still good discussions. So what I decided to do is this week, we're going to do a week in review and just pull out some clips and sound bites of all the videos that we've done over these last six months. And so I sat down, I did that. It took me hours, but it was fun getting to see those discussions again and hear those voices. So I want to, I, I want to just encourage you enjoy our reflection on a table for one over this last six months as we look back at the interviews we've had in this season. Your other passion I know is is something that you've been doing for a, for a while, little while now um, especially more formally of, of the, over the last uh, few years and it's something that uh, that Obviously, it's it, obviously you're passionate about it, and I, and I think it'd be interesting to hear people hear about it that because it's more than just something you do. It's something that you feel God is 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 charging you with doing. So right. uh, let's talk about that a little bit about about this this ministry outreach or now I I don't know if about outreach is the right word, but this this ministry you do to to help people. Okay, well, first of all, that is my main ministry is um, what I call career coaching. And um, it started back in the 80s when I would just do help people in different situations that God would bring to me. I didn't seek this out. They came to me to help them with their resumes. Mm -hmm. A3 uh, principal, lo and behold, within a few weeks, I was I had 100 students. I've also started teaching now regularly at Thurston High School, at Springfield High School. And the next year, I'll be working in all the high schools in Eugene School District. So I'll have, wow. what, two or three, if you count the alternative schools in Springfield, and then Eugene, you've got all the high schools plus an alternative school. She's a very new believer. One thing that God uh, impressed upon me when I was taking one of my legendary walks was, okay, Susan, so let, 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 let's review this salvation experience for you. You were, what, 28 going on 29. And um, you got married when you were 32 and started having your children at 34. And uh, when exactly was it that you started studying the Bible and applying yourself toward being a follower of me? Oh, six years, huh? <laughs> six years. Okay. So that, that humbled me a lot. And I, I love memory. 
because it's not just, you know, the sweet memories of someone who may not be with us anymore or a wonderful time that you shared with a friend. Yeah. But I like memories of even my shameful things or things I'm not terribly proud of because it humbles me. It mm -hmm. brings me from the, well, this is the way I think everybody should live back into, yet I didn't even live this way back mm -hmm. in the day. I could see that he's done a lot of work in my life and I praise him for that. So now I get to step back and give room for him to do the same in her life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some stuff happened and I was forced very much to cling on to God. It's like, you know, fr from that there was, God taught me um, what unconditional love looked like through exhibiting it. Um, okay. To, to be perfectly blunt, uh, there, there was a phrase that he and I got to learn together. It, it, it's uh, shut up and love. <laughs> but I said, when it comes, when the day comes that your dad needs hospice, um, if you need a place where everybody can gather, you can come to our house. It was, my kid had a bad day at work that day and he was like, oh, God. unloading, unloading, unloading. And I said, are you done? Cause I, I really need to share something important with you. <laughs> And, and Mike was like, what? They, she, what? And literally two minutes later, he was like, absolutely. Yes. That's awesome. It's the right thing to do. And I, I can tell you that I love my husband a hundred times more today than I did before that. Cause he came through in amazing, amazing ways. I saw my husband carry my ex-husband like this, uh, you know, from one bed to another so Amanda could change sheets. He took time off from work mm. so that he could be helpful towards the end when Amanda could not handle things by herself. And then when my wife got hired on, it was just more like a, okay, like she's really passionate about this and I want to see her succeed and I want to see, you know, these kids experience God and, you know, being in ministry, you can't do it alone. You know, even if she has a team behind her, I'll, I want her to know that I'm behind her as well. You know, so she has someone who can, she can relate with when she comes home or talk to about it or you know you know on some level i want to be there you know yeah me being able to say okay i'm home from work like you can go now like you know i know you got to get stuff done and just allowing her to take that time you know yeah how would you say your faith has shaped your philosophy and counseling and, and how you go about it i literally see the lack of God in clients. And there's times that you would love to be like, hey, you know what would really be helpful would be Jesus in your life. <laughs> but once again, can't do that. So it goes back to how do I help support health and hope that they will get there. But the problem is that, you know, if they have a lot of relational trauma with people in their lives, or they're really stressed about, you know, paying the bill or these other things, less likely to get to the point where they're taking the time to attune to like their spiritual self mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're like in crisis or survival mode. And so, you know, my faith definitely impacts the way I see people because I can see what's missing in their lives, but it's helping them to also see what's missing in their lives. They want more of God. They want to experience more of God. They're crying out to God. Um, but they're, it's, they're not really putting anything into their life to bring more of God and, mm -hmm, and to mm -hmm. cultivate that relationship, which would be, you know, a dedicated space, um, writing, journaling, praying, reading the Bible. Um, yeah. Cause I think all believers want to experience more of God, but how bad do you want it? Are you willing to be intentional about cultivating the relationship? Or are you just waiting for him to come and do all the work? Yeah. We just recently within the past couple of months started doing verse every night or a verse every night. We do one verse a week. One verse a week. Okay. So we do it for the whole week. Um, we started on Sunday night and then we repeat it throughout the week. So just that repetition, we say it all together. Some of us yell it out. Some of us sing it out. You know, whatever your oh, yeah. mood is for if the it's, day. If it's a verse from any any Bible story song that we know, uh -huh. we, we definitely sing it. Sing it. Uh -huh. No matter what happens, no matter what happens, I still have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the one who created me, the one who loves me no matter what. He still loves me. And the one... Uh, 
I still get to praise Him. And when you commit to do whatever you do is unto the Lord, by golly, ministry just happens. What do you like about church? Uh, the youth group. The youth group? Yeah. What about it? Um, just we get to do fun activities. Okay. And sometimes beat each other with poonadles. <laughs> <laughs> Our older community needs to, we need to reach out to mm -hmm. them more and because they have so much that we could learn from and yeah. listen to and they need all of you as well as vice versa I guess. Now more than ever is a, a great opportunity yeah. for us with the programmatic stuff pushed aside for us to really focus on developing relationships mm -hmm. and with those kids who do have a relationship with Jesus that we're able to build them in their faith and for those that don't that we get to share in in very personal ways what it is to follow Jesus. But God, you are not only near us, we acknowledge your presence that is beyond us and above us, that encompasses all of your creation. God, you see the movement of weather. You see the movement of viruses. You see the decisions that the governments of men make and that individuals make. And God, all of them are but tools in your hand. In this time, I believe we've really had a chance to, and I have had a chance to quiet my soul, quiet my heart, and listen, mm -hmm. and be open to. Where before, I had a list of things I had to do, things that needed to get done. I'm always busy, something's happening, and if there wasn't, I was making something happen. <laughs> so I don't I know could, what that's like at all. <laughs> keeping myself busy, right? So. Especially as I get older, I become more and more convinced of uh, the Yo value. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, Should um, I buy you a cane no, after this? Just about, hey, you're not far behind me, my friend. <laughs> so, Where were we? Yeah. Distance in relationships. The older I get, the more convinced I become of the value of working to make some recovery mm -hmm. in those areas. And, and that's not the legacy that God desires for us. It's not the one that he thinks is important. It's not about how we'll be remembered. But to God, it's, it's who we've impacted. So as we live our lives, and sometimes we even look at what is my legacy? What am I leaving behind me? We need to remember it has nothing to do with what we're doing. The tasks, the stuff. It has everything to do with the people that we touch and that we impact. Part of me, what, what I'll do is kind of take them with me somewhere, like say, mm. let's go to, you know, let's go for a drive up the Mackenzie or yeah. whatever, you know, not right now up the Mackenzie, but, yep. you know, go for a drive or do something. So it's a kind of an includer sort of thing to get them out of their reclusiveness okay. mm -hmm. um, to make it a, just a fun kind of an outing or let's go for a hike, or, uh, yeah, a walk or something. <laughs> <laughs> like I hike. <laughs> uh, my wife always tells me we should go for a hike. I'm like, I don't, I don't like hiking. <laughs> yeah, or invite them for lunch or something. Yeah. But it helps people get out of the house because I do know people that are tend to be like that. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was a learning curve. It was a real learning curve, and getting out of the mindset that you have to say something mm. to share your faith. Mm -hmm. that really, especially in that culture, people watch. They watch your actions. They watch mm -hmm. what you do. And that, when I started to realize that, it's like, I can do this without saying, blatantly saying anything. Yeah. And, you know, students have a lot of questions, especially university students. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of questions. And I can share from my own personal experience if they ask me a question. And that was always delightful, very delightful. In the latter years, what I realized is, you know, there's a lot of truth in the Bible. There's a lot of truth in what Jesus said. And I don't mm -hmm. have to say, well, you know, Jesus says. Yeah, no, no. I can say, well, you know, a, a good teacher once said, or I've read this in a mm -hmm. special book. And I can share those words without making them in your face, confrontational, religious. Yeah. 
And the Lord, I just ask as they come here, they'd be welcomed with open arms from everyone in the mm -hmm. church, Lord. They'd just, there'd be an excitement uh, of someone coming very special, and they are very special. Lord, I'd pray that uh, you would find them housing. Mm -hmm. I pray, Lord, that you would give them the right school to go to and the right people to meet. And I just pray, Father, that uh, we'll be meeting in church soon. I pray, Lord, that you would give Springfield Faith Center, just give them love for this couple, Lord. Yes. I ask, Lord, that you would prepare them and uh, in a unique way, Lord. I don't know what that is for Springfield Faith Center, mm -hmm. but I just pray everybody would be open to listen and enjoy what God has sent to us. And, and I believe with all my heart that God has sent this couple to us. I felt very peaceful and very comfortable listening to them and meeting them, Lord. I just ask that everybody else would have that sense as soon as they meet them, Lord. Thank you, Lord, in this time of misery for so many and heartbreak for so many. You are there everlastingly as the power of uh, glory yes. and peace and health. And we thank you in Jesus' precious name. From my experience more individually, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of women from the church who came alongside in particular. Um, a few, I remember more by name, actually your mother being one of them. Yeah. Uh, Bev, Bev made Christmas cookies with me at Christmas time and, and would just take me out for an afternoon mm -hmm. occasionally. Uh, some may, may, some, yeah. But there were, there were multiple women in the church um, that showed up consistently, that, that, you know, once every couple months, they'd take me out for a whole afternoon. They'd do something. I'd get a card in the mail saying, I was thinking about you, or, yeah. or many other different ways. And it was, it, it had a profound impact on me as a child, and it still impacts me as an adult. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our little bit of reflection this week. But before I let you go, I do have just a scripture that I felt the Spirit put on my heart that I want to share with you and, and some thoughts. So here it is. It's out of 2 Samuel uh, chapter 22, and it starts at verse 26. And, and it reads, To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the pure, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty to bring them low. You, Lord, are my lamp. The Lord turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. When I, when I read this, my mind started going different ways, but I just felt the Spirit say, when we really start to lean in and say, God, I want to know you, I want to experience you, I want to be transformed by you, that when we start showing those character qualities of him, that faithfulness, the, the, the blamelessness, the purity, the righteousness, those things that, that it's not just that we experience it and we start to show it, but we start seeing those things. We start seeing those character qualities of God in our lives and all around us. And it changes our perspective. And let's be honest, I think all of us could use a little perspective change sometimes. We can get caught in all the gunk going on in life and we start losing sight. And sometimes, I'm not saying always, I'm saying sometimes, that's because we've become, we start to become disconnected and we're getting and wrapped in all the turmoil and stuff going on around us. So my encouragement right now is just lean into God. Devote time to scripture, devote time to prayer, to worship, to compassion and kindness to those around us. Experience God in your life. Because remember, he will save the humble, those who come to him. And those that are proud and think that they know better. He's going to bring them low. But also he will be our light in the darkest of times. 
He will be our strength when we are weak and nothing can stand against, against us. The enemy can't stand. Walls and barriers will be nothing because our God is with us. Church, I love you. I am praying for you always. And I can't wait to see you in person again. Have a wonderful holiday. God bless. And we'll see you next time on A Table for One.